This is the DJI Air 3. In today's video, we're gonna see how good it is for photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the process of making 3D models using pictures from your drone. It's something that almost anyone can do. It's a great thing for part 107 pilots to add to their portfolio. In today's video, I'm gonna not only show you how to do it for the Air 3, but I'm also gonna walk you through the steps and also show you the results. And I've also got some side-by-side -side comparisons with flights, previous flights that I did with the DJI Mini 4 Pro that we also check with today. First off, let's take a deep dive in looking at what's special about this drone, what makes it unique, and then we'll start flying a couple things. Some of the most notable things about this is just like the Mini 4 Pro, the gimbal assembly on this actually tilts up to about 60 degrees. And funny enough, in addition, over the Mini 3, it has two cameras. One of the interesting things though is that the camera inside here is actually the same sensor size and pretty much the same camera assembly. So if we take this apart, this camera in here is just d duplicated with a bigger lens on the air. So that's the same camera on the top. It looks a little bigger, but it really is the same aperture and same sensor and same megapixels, just two of them stacked on top of each other. So realistically, if you were deciding between getting the Mini, we've already done a video on the Mini talking about how good this is for photogrammetry. So in this one, we're going to be comparing this, and obviously we're gonna try using both of these lenses because that's the main draw of this. Now keep in mind with photogrammetry, you wanna maintain the same lens throughout all your data set. Throughout this video, you're also going to see me using this device. This is the AnyDrone RTK. It is an RTK module compatible with the Air 3, Mavic 3 series, and the Mini 4 Pro, as well as pretty much every drone on the market, um, I wanna say of decent quality. So you can put this on your drone, it collects the RTK data. So you just strap this to your drone, fly your map, and then you have RTK positional data. And what that means is that the drones, when it takes a picture, the position in space where that's at, actually is a lot more accurate than what it normally would be without the RTK data. It actually means a lot higher quality models and the measurements on them are a lot better. This is available for pre-order. This is something that my startup has been working on for the last two or so years. It's finally at the point where we're kind of pushing it. Um, and pre-orders are like 20 bucks. You can put a refundable pre-order if you want to buy this. So taking these pictures for 3D models is kind of difficult. Usually we use automated software to fly the drone for us because not only is it like really annoying, but it's also very difficult when you start doing this like on a large scale. So we're going to be using a tool called Waypoint Map. It's something that I made. It's a website that you can go through and basically select an area that you want to make a 3D model of and it will then create a flight plan that your drone will fly and take pictures of. It's not going to create the 3D model, but it's important that you do this so A, the model turns out good, and also B, you're not spending that whole time actually having to fly the drone. The drone will just automatically do it for you. So this is waypointmap.com, and I'll have a link to this also in the description. Anyway, so how Waypoint Map works is you allows you to go through and select an area. Um, the big thing for me though is I always like this little building. I think this is a bathhouse slash picnic area. And actually, before I do that, let me go through and enable some of the paid features. So um, I'm going to try to explain the differences. You can watch the full tutorial video for like the details about how you can do this without paid. Um, but basically, you just instead of having all this stuff, you just have to do some slight differences. Um, instead of taking the pictures at each point, uh, you just go through and uh, set it to time shots on the drone. So you have the drone automatically take the pictures at an interval. It's, it, it really accomplishes the same result. Um, some people just prefer this. So I'm going to go through and do a couple rounds here. And then I'm also, let's see, generate this one. And then I'm going to generate this one. And then that will come in. And then I also want it to go through and fly this little area here. And I'd prefer it to do it top down as well. So let's change the gimbal angle to negative 90 and let's go through and turn uh, have it generate every point and we'll generate with take pictures and then that way we can generate this and then now that will take the pictures with it the, the gimbal 90 degrees and it will go through and get a high view of um, our little picnic area here so after I've gotten this flight plan set up I just download this uh, so I come down here and I hit the download KMZ file. And now this is the file that I load into the RC. 
since the Air 3 has the N1 and the RC2, if you have the, the non-screen version, you probably should watch the tutorial. Now let's also go through and do this little area here. This is a good spot. So fun tip, whenever you make circles, if this is anything other than 45 degrees, it will like follow that when it makes the circle. However, if you leave it at 45 degrees, it actually adjusts according to where it is. So for example, I'm going to go through and make two circles. And since it's 45 degrees, it's gonna automatically adjust for the prime angle to focus at um, the center. So it actually increases the quality. So you, if you are making circles, it's 99% of the time best just to leave that at 45. And then when you wanna go through and do a direct overhead view of mapping, a direct overhead pass, I'm just gonna do a pretty boxy circle like this. And then I'm just gonna generate the points. And then there you go. And that's gonna be looking straight down and that will allow a pretty solid view as well. So that should be good for creating a really solid roof view and also a really solid um, 3D view as well. So also gonna download this one and then we are good to go. So we've got two missions. I think those will be two good ones to follow. So I think it's now time to just go out and fly it, load it on the controller and let's get started. So again, you're really gonna wanna watch the tutorial if you don't know what's going on here. So I plugged in my RC and I'm just going to replace the KMZ file here with the one that I downloaded. Again, if you're confused, if you have the one without a screen, etc., you're going to want to follow the tutorial video. It's okay to pause this and go watch that, but basically you just replace it. It's not that complicated. And again, I just plugged in the art remote controller. I did have to make a waypoint mission already, so just make like a dummy one. Um, but overall, you just replace it, really simple. And then you just fly it like it's a waypoint mission when you go to the spot. So real quick, you can also go through and check to make sure everything's working. A reminder of what we're doing is we're just clicking the waypoints button, we're opening up a waypoint mission, and we're selecting the one that we just replaced. And as you can see, all these points load up nicely into your controller. And then you can click on this and see everything's loaded in there and just exit without saving. So now I'm gonna start flying these missions. Um, I'm going to actually do two passes with the exact same flight path, one zoomed in and then one not zoomed in. So using the 3X camera and then also using the 1X. That way we get to see the results um, how, and how they vary with different zooms. So as you can see right now, the drone is just flying the mission. It's going around and it's doing exactly what we told it to. We wanted it to focus on this building here and it's just doing all the automated stuff. I don't have my hands on the controller right now and it's basically just flying this completely for me. I don't have to touch anything. And this actually means that the model is going to be a lot better quality than if you just took a bunch of random spotty shots. Um, there's a lot of overlap is what we call it between these pictures and it results. And so it should look really good when we're done. So I just got done with that previous mission. I flew it with the 1X and then the 3X cameras. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing with this baseball park. Um, as you can tell, this is a little bit higher, farther, more of an area covered, but it is again, really nice to be doing this all automatically. And also I'm gonna put up a side-by-side -side comparison of the same shot, because this is flying the same mission, it's taking the same pictures in the same spot, um, and just do a side-by-side -side comparison between the 2X, sorry, the 3X, and the 1X cameras to see kind of what the difference covered is. I expect that with the 3X, the detail is going to be better, but I also expect that there's gonna be less area covered. So I'm gonna be interested to see what that difference looks like when we create the 3D model. So to make our 3D models, I made a little service that allows you to basically make them for free up to like 25 images. This is really good if you're just learning. Um, and if you're not learning and you wanna do something that's relatively cheap, it's really affordable. My goal is to make this very cheap. If you're familiar with anything in the market about how much this stuff normally costs, it's like $300, $400 a month, depending on what model generation service you're using. Anyway, so point in case is, um, this is free for you to use up to 25 images. You just make an account and you upload the images and we can get started. So I'm gonna upload these images. So all you do is you make a new project and you select what images you wanna do. I'm going to select all of them and generate out the maps. So depending on how many images you have, it actually depends on how long it'll take. Usually it's like exponential, so I think about 25 images takes like five minutes. And then if you wanna go like up to like 600 or 700, I think that takes like six or seven hours. So it just depends on how many images you're processing. 
So let's take a look. I think this is the 3x of the baseball's field. I'll bump up the quality a little bit. Not too bad. Um, things you'll notice is the more images you take and the more images you include, the better. Um, I believe this is the, I think this was like 100 some images, 120. Um, if you wanted to get away with doing just the 25 for the free version, you really just do a single circle around here and then just pick 25 images from that. You can even set it um, in waypoint map or whatever. I think you just have 25 points. And then you can just do a full circle flyby and you get relatively pretty close to what we've got here. Um, obviously where there's gaps, you've just got to take more pictures there. So with when we were flying up here, we're not going to be able to see, of course, what's underneath this ledge. So it makes sense there's a gap there. We could, of course, uh, get by that by flying down a little closer. Um, this was technically locked off, so I didn't want to get the drone crashed or something and not be able to get it. Um, but yeah, you can basically go through and see where you could do more where you could do less and that works and then you can just download the 3d model and if you want to do an overhead map uh, you could do that too let's do a side by side comparison with the larger version so this was the much larger with the 1x and it's interesting to see just how much of a difference that made i mean i think it's really interesting to see how much the trees actually uh, really got picked up this time you can definitely notice that the quality on here is not as good it is okay and I would say it's not as bad as I expected but there is a lot more coverage so if you were looking to make like an overhead map this would be a good idea but if you wanted to get something a little bit higher quality detail um, I think you should probably focus on your your subject a little bit more overall I think it looks pretty good and of course download and then share this link with someone too. I'm also going to include all the links to this as well um, on the uh, in the description as well. So you can go through and uh, check out each of these models in the description, uh, whatever you'd like to take a look at and then see how they turned out other than just in this video. So moving back over here, I think this is the 3X. So this is the 3X and interesting just how nicely this roof came out. I like the roof because it does a good job showing like quality wise. I think everything else uh, definitely could have used some overhead or you know, a little bit closer flyby. I think you could have easily maybe done ground level, um, but I like doing it. And that was of course the same flight path that I'm gonna show you next. And then this is the larger view and notice just how much the 3X decreases it. I personally actually think that the 1x is more than enough as in I think the quality does not you know degrade that much between the 1x and the 3x I think the 1x is more than enough this is I think fine and look how much more area you capture so I really think that um, the 1x is basically clothing what's on the DJI Mini 4 Pro I think the Mini 4 Pro is definitely the better buy in my opinion um, you can get it's cheaper you can get more batteries for it and you can get the longer lasting batteries for about the same price and I personally prefer the Mini 4 Pro just because of how light it is and small um, but that's just my preference I think especially with the same sensor same camera etc this is pretty solid in my opinion so 